Welcome to the House of Suntory Masterclass featuring Roku Japanese Craft Gin and Haku Japanese Craft Vodka. My name is Nana Sacher and I am the Portfolio Brand Ambassador for Beam Suntory right here in the Gulf. And we have all kinds of amazing products from all over the world. Amazing Scottish whiskies, American whiskies, French cognacs, Mexican tequila. But today we're going to talk about Japanese premium spirits and where they came from. So as you know, our name is Beam Suntory and it's the merger of two great companies that have been around for a long time, since the 1800s, if you will. But the Suntory side is the one that is really innovating and pushing new boundaries in this day and age. It is all the rage to get Japanese whiskies. And I have to admit, this Japanese whiskey category, it's our fault. So, at the end of this masterclass, you're going to learn a couple of things. Number one, you're going to learn the story of how the Japanese premium spirit category began. You're going to learn about these two magnificent brands that we have in our portfolio. And then I'm going to make one cocktail, which is the signature cocktail for Roku Japanese Craft Gin, and then talk about pairing it with food. Because one thing that's at the heart of everything we're doing, especially now with Japanese whiskeys, gins, and vodkas, has to do with giving you an overall experience with your meal and your drink. So pairing food is immensely important. And when we talk about the pairings, you'll learn how to host properly with the products that we have. So let's begin. In 1899, there was a 20-year-old named Shinjiro Tori who took off on a little journey out west. So you have to understand, in J Japan at this time period, it was the period known as the Meiji era. And the Meiji era is a period of modernization and restoration. As you know, Japan is highly traditional. You know, they've got traditional cooking, they've got traditional tea ceremonies, traditional clothing, and they have a season that pretty much celebrates every aspect of life. But they were looking at what was happening out west, and they saw things like modern day cameras, cars, and all kinds of new technology that they wanted to bring over to Japan to enrich the lives of their people. So the best thing to do would be to send some of their youth out to the West to learn about this technology and bring it back so that, as we've seen today, they could enhance that technology and enrich the lives of the people that live in that beautiful country. So young men like Shinjiro took off out West. They visited places like Europe. And Shinjiro took a very big interest in the Western wines and spirits. He heard the stories. He saw the techniques. He learned everything he possibly could. And he realized that if he brought this back to his people, their lives would be even better. So he went back to Japan and established, I guess, what would be our first headquarters, Tori Shoten. So it was a store that imported Western wines of spirits and sold them to the Japanese people. The thing is, some of the Western wines and spirits have very, very potent flavors. If you think about a brand like Laphroaig, for example, very peaty, very, very rich. But if you think about traditional Japanese cooking, three words I want you to keep in mind. Subtle, refined, yet complex. So with those three words in mind, there's nothing in there that says they like pungent and in your face, if you will. So he imported some Western wines and spirits, but the Japanese palate wasn't ready for it quite yet. And so what he ended up doing to combat this, the man learned how to blend. And whenever I say that to anyone that I'm training, I think of this Rocky montage because he was meticulous and relentless about it. He practiced every single day 
just blending, blending, blending this, blending wine, blending whiskey, blending this, until he came up with an incredible product known as Akadama Port Wine. Now, Akadama Port Wine had port, of course, and also featured Spanish sherry oak to age and finish it. Akadama Port Wine was a massive success. The branding, a little bit provocative, <laughs> not gonna lie. There was a Japanese geisha on the bottle and it really caught the eyes and attention of Japanese people and exploded on the scene. Shinjiro made a ton of money, but he asked himself, why couldn't I rely on the products and the nature that I already have in my own country to produce something for the Japanese people? He had to import the barrels. He had to import the grapes and import the spirits. Why couldn't he make that stuff right at home in Japan? It would certainly be a lot cheaper. So that's when his vision to create Japan's first authentic whiskey came to fruition. And he ended up hiring a man named Taketsuru Masataka. How's my Japanese? Not bad, huh? So, Taketsuru Masataka had also visited Scotland. He had married a beautiful Scottish woman named Rita and moved back to Japan with pretty much this massive stack of notes on how to distill it, how to build the distilleries, and everything you could possibly think about in terms of making whiskey. So the two teamed up, but they had a bit of a difference in philosophy. Shinjiro wanted to create whiskey that reflected the nature in Japan. Masataka wanted to employ traditional Scottish techniques for making whiskey. With that said, Shinjiro wanted to find land that was deep in the heart of Japanese nature. Something that truly represented all the beauty that the land had to offer and hopefully impart flavors. So, they settled in the Yamazaki region. And that's when they began construction of Jap Japan's first whiskey distillery. So Shirofuda White Label was created and unfortunately was not much of a success. But before Shirofuda White Label, you had Hermes Gin. And it is that gin making tradition that Suntory continued until the debut of Roku Gin. And Roku is the perfection that Suntory was seeking. Soon after Roku debuted, you had Haku Japanese Craft Vodka. And Haku is the labor of love between a few different distilleries that Suntory owns. In 1972, they established the Chita Distillery, which produces a grain whiskey and has four tall columns that produce various base types of whiskey that they use in every single Suntory blend. In 1973, they established the Hakushu Distillery, and the Hakushu Distillery sits 700 feet above sea level in the mountainous range known as the 100 Famous Mountains. Now, hearing that, you can tell how important nature is to Suntory's overall plan when it comes down to any spirit they produce. When you taste a Japanese whiskey, you can taste the nature, you can smell the nature. And the same is true when it comes down to these brand new gins and vodkas. So let's get a little friendly with Roku Japanese craft gin. It's actually a bit of a wonder in terms of how they created it. Because as you know, gin is a juniper-based spirit that is flavored with a grouping of botanicals and cut with distilled water. Typically when you're making a gin, you're basically making a nice big neutral grain stew. You might have 10 botanicals, you might have 20. But either way, there's a method to each botanical that's in there. Either it's gonna give you mouthfeel, or it's gonna give you nice aromas, or flavor, or 
a long tannin finish. But with Roku, we've minimized the amount of botanicals, but also focused on six traditional Japanese botanicals. So, the name Roku, it means the number six. And I know this because in Japanese, my name means seven. Ishi, ni, san, yon, go, roku, nana. So I guess it was meant to be. Now with Roku Japanese craft gin, the six botanicals represent Japanese nature, the first of which being the sakura flower. And the sakura is the cherry blossom flower that blooms every spring for two weeks at a time. So we focus on two parts of that flower, the sakura petal and the sakura leaf. If you consume the, cons the sakura petal as a tea, it's a little bit salty. You might look at it and see pink and assume it'll be sweet, but it's got salt. And salt really brings flavors together. If you focus on the petal, anyone that remembers being a kid and eating the flower petals and eating the flower leaves will know that if you get the leaf of a flower, it's going to be a little bit bitter. Next up, you have two types of green tea. The first of which being sencha green tea. We've all had sencha green tea. We all know what that flavor profile is like. We know that tea provides a long-lasting tannic finish. And we also have gyokuro green tea. Now gyokuro is different in the sense that it grows in the shade. So if you're going to make sencha green tea and gyokuro green tea, you need way more gyokuro in order to, in order to extract flavor. So right away we're seeing four different botanical types that require different levels of attention, different steeping times, different boiling points. Keep all this in mind. The final two we have Sancho pepper. So Sancho pepper is like a capsicum, but it leaves this numbing effect in the middle of your tongue when you eat it. It also has some, an element of citrus to it. And the final, final botanical that we all know about is yuzu. So yuzu exudes another level of citrus it's a combination of a lemon and a grapefruit in terms of how round that aroma is and just the type of finish you get on your tongue. And we see yuzu everywhere. We see it in cocktails, we see it in non-alcoholic beverages, we see it in cooking. Yuzu is all over the place, so we should all be familiar with it. If you add all six into one neutral grain stew, this is the thing. They all have their own different boiling points and they're all going to either burn too early or not cook enough. So the balance is going to be off. So this is what we've done with Roku to counter that. To begin, each botanical is picked at the peak of its harvest. So that the botanical is number one. It's at its best. After that, using vacuum distillation, which means that you can distill each of these botanicals at a low boiling point. Each of them have their own different distillates that we then blend back together and distill with the gin. So we have eight traditional gin botanicals and then the six distillates of this peak gin. The term is referred to as shun, meaning everything in its right time, everything in its right place. Japanese cooking is highly seasonal, so we will not pick any of these botanicals outside of season. Once everything is blended together, it comes in this beautiful bottle with a nice hexagon shape. And this is a bottle that I really, really appreciate seeing on my shelf because it makes my shelf and my house and my bar elevated. It elevates any display that you might have. So that is Roku Japanese Craft Gin. A fantastic blend that literally gives you every possible style of gin that you could be looking for on the shelves. Do you want a citrusy gin? Roku's got that. Do you want a floral gin? 
Roku also has that. Herbal, peppery. Roku combines every other gin type that you enjoy and you love pouring in your gin tonics, your Negronis, and your martinis, and rolls it up into one bottle with six sides. Pretty good innovation from Suntory, I'd say. The Japanese have done it again. Speaking of doing it again, they weren't finished. For a while, vodka was dominating the market. Since 1940, when some famous brands from Russia came down to America, vodka exploded on the scene post-prohibition. People loved the fact that it was light, that it was smooth, that it was easy to drink. And they also didn't mind the fact that if you poured it in the soda, you wouldn't necessarily be able to tell that you were drinking vodka. Now enter Haku, Japanese craft vodka. And everything you could possibly want in the vodka is in this bottle, but there's more character. So, keeping in line with the theme of using Japanese nature and also thinking about food, Haku is rice vodka. So with vodkas, it's a neutral grain spirit. You can make vodka with wheat. You can make vodka with barley. You can make vodka with rye. Suntory chose rice. And they went to the best region in Japan to find the people that can make rice spirit the best and most delicious, which is the Osumi region in Japan. Now, Osumi is where you'll find the best sake and the best shochu. And sake, as we know, is a Japanese tradition for nearly 1,000 years. So the idea with haku was to take rice spirit, but then distill it into a vodka that has a nice, subtle, round, and sweet complex. So haku begins its life with traditional sake means. And once that rice spirit has been created, they send it to two different distilleries. I mentioned the Osaka distillery that was, that was opened in 1919. Part of the rice spirit is sent to Osaka. Next, the other spirit is split off and sent to Chita distillery. So at Osaka, that's where the spirit undergoes vacuum distillation. Because as I mentioned, vacuum distillation is able to distill very delicate spirits at low temperatures. If you were to distill it in a regular fashion, you might have an overcooked grain, which will impart bitter notes, which will impart very burnt edges. But if you're able to find the perfect temperature and maintain that consistency throughout your distillation, you're going to have a nice, smooth, pure flavor profile. So, Osaka has the vacuum, Chita has column. After each of those spirits are distilled through the respected stills, they filter each of them with bamboo and charcoal. And bamboo and charcoal have a ton of porous holes that filter any impurity out of any liquid. In Japan, they'll use this in a lot of their water tanks because Japan is obsessed with having clean water, and so is Suntory. Every single distillery is chosen based on the water source that is nearby. So after the filtration happens, just like that rocky training montage with Mr. Shinjiro Tori, they blend the two spirits together and then bottle it. So that's the story when it comes down to both of these brands. And the thing that I want you to take away the most is the simple fact that Suntory is innovating their spirits. Right now, the Japanese premium spirit market, there's a ton of demand for it. There's a ton of demand for the whiskeys and a ton of demand for the process that happens. So companies like Suntory that led the charge in creating this whole category want to create as much innovation and differentiation as they possibly can in order to not only do themselves justice, but do the entire world of spirits justice. So what I'm going to do next is showcase 
Roku's signature cocktail, which is the Japanese gin and tonic. And then also talk about some pairings that you can do with both brands. I'll make a Haku Martini, which will showcase how delicate, smooth, round, and subtly sweet this vodka truly is. And also what happens when this vodka gets chilled because it actually takes the vodka to a whole other stratosphere. So let's get to it. So when it comes down to cocktails for Haku and Roku, because we're looking at two spirits that they basically have some really elite level production, they've produced a vodka that is very delicate and light and a gin that's able to pair with so many different styles of cocktails and also cuisine. So let's talk about Haku Vodka first because I think when it comes to vodka, there are a few things that we might have to dispel about Haku. Right now, vodka is in a market that you find it at the clubs, bottle service. This is something that would go very well at bottle service. However, it's got an additional level of premium because it goes so well with beautiful light pairings of raw dishes. So when I say the raw dishes, I'm talking about sashimi, sushi. Of course, it's Japanese, so of course it'll pair well with it. But because the vodka itself has a nice body to it and a beautiful texture, you can also pair it with some other vegetables, you can get a little bit more creative. For myself, I think Haku with dessert, fantastic. So let's make a Haku martini because I think you can have a martini for nearly any occasion. And there are people in the history of literature and fiction like James Bond who will definitely illustrate that martinis are for any day, any time of the week. So. You might notice here that you've got an extra chilled bottle of Haku. Something I want to note, I want you to note. When you have Haku on its own, you're going to get the nice subtly round sweet flavor. But once you freeze it and you chill the vodka down, the aromas come out like you've never even thought. A lot of people just think that vodka has no smell and no taste, but this is an example that is further from that fiction. So with the Haku Martini, I would like you to first and foremost pour a little bit of sake. When I first became the portfolio ambassador, I went for my training and the first drink they made me was a Haku Martini with sake. So we got that aspect. Next up, we're going to pour the Haku vodka and I'm going to do a nice healthy portion, about 50 milliliters because trust me, you could do 60 milliliters and it's still going to be as smooth from start to finish as anything that you've ever imagined. It's like drinking a cloud. This is already chilled down quite a bit. So now it's important for me to add some ice and I'm not going to make this martini in the, in the traditional sense because it is a light vodka and it doesn't need much in terms of stirring. You don't need to shake it. It's something you could actually just sip. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw the martini between the two shakers and that's going to give a different level of aeration. Okay, so that aeration is just going to open up the vodka to new flavor notes that you might not have detected by merely sipping it at room temperature. I'm doing this much slower than I normally would, only because I want to illustrate it to you. And I'm just going to throw it three times.
perfect. So now, I'm just gonna add it to this beautiful martini glass. And all I'm gonna add is a light lemon zest. And drop. And there we have it. A nice Haku martini with a sake modifier. So next up, we have the Roku Gin Tonic, which is a Japanese gin and tonic. And what makes it distinctively Japanese is the fact that, yes, you have six traditional Japanese botanicals, but it also features ginger as the garnish. As you know, with cooking, spice, salt, it really enhances the flavor profile of any dish that you're putting in there. And I know my mother, she likes to use ginger in a lot of different things, and trust me when I say this, my mother can cook. So, the ginger in this Roku Gin and Tonic brings harmony to all six botanicals. And it also enhances whatever tonic you choose. But if you are gonna choose a tonic, I highly recommend going with one of the premium tonics because they take a lot more dedication and care to their production. That I think Roku deserves. Because if Roku is gonna put that much care and dedication to their production, any other ingredient you include should also be the same. That means high quality fruit, high quality tonics, high quality mixers. Got it? Got it. All right. So now I'm gonna do this the Japanese way. I'm gonna add some ice, first and foremost. And the idea is to make sure that you chill the vessel. We've got a nice, beautiful Roku Copa glass. Gin tonics with Copa glasses are all the rage all over the world. And since this is a global drink, we decided to give it the exact same treatment. So once you see that nice frost on the glass, then you know you're in good shape. Make sure you strain any excess water out of there. First and foremost, we're gonna add six ginger matchsticks, and you cut it into long slithers. You put the ginger matchsticks in first, because when you add your tonic and when you add the gin, you want the gin and the tonic cascading over the ginger and infusing with flavor. Excellent. Now, you wanna add your premium tonic in first. And when you add that tonic in, you're looking for the gaps. You don't want to pour that tonic over the ice because it'll dilute the tonic first. All right, so there goes a bottle of nice premium tonic. And then, if you're serving it to a guest, you want to pour the Roku Gin into one of these sake cups on the side and let the guest have the pleasure of serving, of pouring the Roku into the cocktail. So that's gonna be about 50 milliliters. And I'm gonna pour. So once that's poured, you wanna blend everything together. So give the Roku Gin a nice light stir. You don't wanna overdo it because you don't wanna lose the bubbles, but you want the gin and the tonic and the ginger to start infusing nicely. Once you've given it a nice stir, you're ready to serve. 
the Japanese gin and tonic. So there we have it. Two cocktails that you can make very, very easily. The Haku Vodka Martini can express that vodka, but make sure you don't over stir. I can't stress that enough. It is a delicate vodka. You might even be better off just letting the vodka freeze and then pouring it into the glass. That's going to be a nice aftertaste, a nice mouthfeel for any food that you pair with it. Or if you just want to enjoy sipping the vodka. It's a vodka you can sip. Imagine that. And then you also have the Japanese gin and tonic. Very versatile gin with just a little hint of ginger that accents the six traditional Japanese botanicals in there. So, now that I've made those cocktails, it is time for me to sign off. But if you have any more questions about the House of Suntory, any of our gins, vodkas, whiskeys, don't hesitate to add Beam Suntory DXB at Facebook and also on Instagram. And then you can also add my personal Instagram, which is at Nana Coppertone. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram, and I'm more than happy to chat about anything regarding our brands, the categories, bartending, or even just life. I'm a nice person. Go figure. So thank you so much. We will have some certificates for those of you that participated in today's masterclass. We also have some goodie bags that you'll be able to take home. And as usual, there might be something in there where you may be able to score your own bottle of Roku or Haku. And in the meantime, I hope that you all stay safe, keep studying, practice, keep on becoming better bartenders and better hospitality professionals because this is our industry and only you and I can make sure that we keep on elevating. So with that said, thanks again and salute.